But basically, to harvest an alligator, you need some way to connect a line to an alligator. You can't just go out and shoot an alligator and then try to recover its carcass. Fight the alligator, tire it out, get it close to the boat, and then dispatch the alligator either with a pistol or a bang stick. One of the most common methods, and to me the most fun, is a rod and reel. And all it needs is to be a rod and reel, say bass type size or catfish type size, and a treble hook. It can be a treble hook as small as this hook. You can see it's not a very big hook compared to the reel size. This hook will catch an alligator up to about 8 to 10 feet in length. Much over that, I would want a bigger hook, something about the size of this one right here. Still, not really big hooks, not a lot of equipment involved. And then as far as line goes, I've caught alligators with line as light as 30 pound test, but nowadays my preferred line is some type of uh, braided type of line. I've used as low as 50 pound test, but some type of braided line because you can feel a lot of it on your on your reel, and you're gonna when you hook an alligator, you're gonna have a pretty good fight on your hands. Typically, the alligators that are in the eight to nine foot range put up more of a fight than say the larger ones. Larger alligators, a lot of time when they're hooked, they'll just go sit on the bottom and wait until they have to come up for air. But this is some simple equipment that you can utilize for harvesting an alligator right here. Another type of alligator hunting equipment is using a harpoon. The harpoon is used to attach a restraining line, typically a lot heavier line than you can use with a rod and reel, to an alligator, and then you can pull the alligator in closer to the boat until you can dispatch it. Several different types of harpoons are being utilized by people. This type of harpoon right here, it's got a buoy attached to it. The rope goes through the handle. And this is more like a thrown harpoon, where you ease up on the alligator and you can actually throw it at the alligator. This other type of harpoon with a longer pole is typically used. The rope has a buoy on the end of it. The buoy can be a crab buoy such as this. It can be a two liter plastic um, soda jug. It can be a milk jug, a bleach bottle, anything that will float so that once the alligator is harpooned, it can be kept up with. One of our most popular forms of alligator hunting in Georgia is archery tackle. People can use bow and arrows, they can use compounds, recurves, longbows, crossbows, whichever they prefer. Some people use the newer um, bow fishing type reels where this reel and line is attached to an arrow. The point on it is typically one that's removable so that once the alligator is shot, the shaft, the head comes off of the air shaft and then the point is attached securely to the line and then they can fight and reel it in. Sometimes they have a jug attached to it so that the alligator can take all the line off and then it's much like using a harpoon. You've used archery tackle to attach that line to the alligator. Some people use a more old-fashioned way, just an old typical bow fishing reel such as this with a fiberglass arrow. It's not as high tech as some of the other things, but it is effective. As with everything, I would always have a rod and reel with me when I went alligator hunting because the rod and reel is the longest way that you can attach a line to an alligator. If you're not able to get close enough to an alligator to harpoon it or to shoot it with an arrow, the rod and reel can reach you out there 40, 50, 60 yards and you can hook up on an alligator. All right, as I mentioned before, there are two legal methods for killing an alligator. It can be dispatched either with a pistol, doesn't matter what caliber, or it can be dispatched with a bang stick. These are a couple of different varieties of bang sticks. Most have a removable chamber such as this. It's a small barrel. The cartridge is inserted in the back right here. Then it's slid into here. Now, the only way this bang stick goes off is if this barrel gets pushed down and the bullet hits a knot in here that makes the firing pin go off. This is a safety switch on this bang stick. You would pull this out, then it's ready to discharge, and it pushes in there and discharges. This is the safety on this one though. The way this works is, when you had the alligator tired out, had him next to the boat, you would then pull the safety switch off of this, and you'd want to hit the alligator right behind his head. You don't want to hit the alligator on top of his head. It's a very bony, hard plate. You could get bullet ricochet, you could get bone fragments, and you could not kill the alligator. Right behind his head is where you'd want to, when you, you want to hit him with the bang stick, just with a sharp angle, angle towards the front of his head, so that the cartridge goes off, 
and hopefully severs his spinal cord right behind his head and also impacts his brain as well. One of the things that I recommend that everybody does when they've harvested their alligator, they've gotten him up to the boat, they've dispatched him, he's laying there alongside the boat and they think he's dead, don't always assume that alligator's dead just because he's been shot and just because he's laying there limp. Alligators are reptiles and if anyone has ever dealt with snakes or turtles of any kind, oftentimes they may appear dead and once you start messing with them, even if they are technically dead, their body may reflex and jerk around a lot. So we recommend to everybody to get that alligator, carefully pull its head over the side of the boat so that you can put electrical tape around its snout. You'd wrap several layers of electrical tape around its snout, just in a fashion where you're just wrapping it around its snout, break it off, and then you can pull that alligator safely in the boat and not worry about him coming back to life. You want to use your temporary alligator tag that you've gotten in the mail, make an incision within six inches of the tip of the tail, insert this tag through that incision, and then clip it. And make sure that you push that tag all the way in until you hear it clip soundly. Then that alligator carcass is officially tagged, and you have until October 15th to either take the carcass or the alligator hide to one of our DNR game management offices and get the federal CITES tag attached to it.